here they come, genetically engineered tomatoes. Cal Jean's flavor saver tomato went on the market today. The first genetically engineered food approved for sale. The tomato stays riper longer than the non-engineered variety, and they say it's tasty. It was a hell of a good product. They say. A taste that took eight years and $20 million to develop. Sure, I'll be buying these. I like them. This tomato is every bit as safe as all the tomatoes that we have in the grocery store. But this high-check tomato has its critics. I think the Food and Drug Administration has put the profits of industry ahead of public health and safety. We will not compromise safety one bit. 20 years later, do we really know enough about what we're doing with the technology? You know, it's, it's just a tomato. In the 1980s, a group of biotech scientists from Davis, California, set out to transform a core American industry. The U.S. market for fresh tomatoes was like $4 billion plus. It was a big market, uh, and it was one where everybody was dissatisfied with the product. The bulk of tomatoes don't taste that good because they're picked green and they're induced to ripen uh, artificially. So if you could, um alter the process by which a tomato softens while it's ripening on the vine and keep it firm enough so that it could survive trucking to market, you'd have a big fresh market tomato business. Calgene was at the forefront of a movement to genetically engineer plants that held great promise for the agricultural industry. We were all very excited. You know, maybe we can have some broad benefit to agriculture by developing a new tool. We had our hands on a gene that was involved in the softening process. When we and others invented the technology for turning a gene off, it became clear that what we should do was turn off the gene that makes a tomato get squishy. So the result is that we have a tomato that was picked 30 days ago that has not been refrigerated and is as perfect as the day it was picked when compared to a normal tomato uh, that's been sitting around uh, and doesn't look too good. The unusual part was that it worked. It was a big surprise. Well, if you think there's a lot of excitement about the Rolling Stones, wait till you hear this story. <laughs> you can have a super tomato in your very own home. Cal Jean's the coverage in the media was, ooh, look at this crazy, wacky new thing they're trying. Question. Do they bounce? <laughs> they probably do. They're pretty. <laughs> the media loved what we were doing because it was a different story. I am holding in front of my face a prototype. This is a tomato. It's like a cute little fruit. How benign, you know. So it was exciting times. Nobody knew the rules. Uh, nobody knew what the regulatory process was. We will ensure that biotech products will receive the same oversight as other products instead of being hampered by unnecessary regulation. We didn't have to go to the FDA to get this thing approved, but I said, if we don't, we're just, we're just not gonna get the public acceptance we want on this. I mean, our strategy was one of total transparency. We asked questions about the technology from day one, and I didn't have any concerns about it. The change in the composition of the food uh, produced through one of these new techniques is insignificant or there's no change at all. But manipulation of nature troubles some. We were concerned that there might be unknown risks associated with these new genetic manipulations. They are underestimating the risks of the technology. We thought this was an important national debate. It may be benign, but it may turn out to be toxic. Our position is better safe than sorry. Even if only the opponents of GMOs were a vocal few, but they had little impact on the public's response when the Flavor Saver tomato was brought to market in May of 1994. Last week, the FDA gave its long-awaited seal of approval to this country's first genetically engineered food. It's a tomato called Flavor Saver. And These are the new Cal Yes, oh, they are. Great. Okay. Isn't that Isn't wonderful? Like the People loved it, and we sold every tomato that we ever got to market for at least two times the going price of other tomatoes. So the fact that it's genetically engineered doesn't bother you? Oh, not a bit. Calgene's product was well received by the public, and I think that was largely due to having been so transparent about the process. Are they clearly labeled? 
Yes, they are. It was labeled on the cellophane wrapper on the tomato. It had point-of-purchase brochures explaining how the tomato was genetically engineered and had a 1-800 number on it. When it comes wintertime, when people are searching for that homegrown flavor, now they'll be able to get it. They flew off the shelves here in Davis. Um, the local grocer uh, rationed them. That's a good problem to have. Unfortunately, we just didn't get enough to market at a reasonable enough cost. They didn't understand agriculture at all in ways that were actually quite comical. They pick some tomatoes in Mexico and send them up to Chicago. Truck rolls up, it's dark, it's cold. They open the truck and realize that the boxes had just fallen all over the place. There was mashed up broken fruit everywhere. Uh, we had to get a lot of the fruit out by shovel, uh, you know, so we were in over our head. We were really a bunch of gene jockeys, you know, not, uh, not tomato farmers. From the plant breeding part of it, knowing what kind of varieties would grow in what parts of the country, the handling of the fruit part of it, all kinds of ways, uh, you know, they just fell flat on their faces. I didn't like the whole tomato business, you know. <laughs> you know it's a shame we ever had to get into it. I was disappointed that we hadn't made a bigger commercial impact. And after 12 years of doing it, to be honest with you, I was just out of gas. We wound up selling the company to Monsanto. The main reason they acquired us, because we had patents on key technology. And I think in the final analysis, they didn't want an upstart out there who was calling for labeling when they didn't want labeling at that time. Monsanto denies its opposition to labeling GMO foods played any role in acquiring Calgene. The company eventually shelved the flavor saver tomato. Monsanto, producing more. Today, Monsanto makes billions every year by selling seeds for a few staple crops infused with genes that kill insects and resist weed killers. By 2012, the GMO industry accounted for 93% of America's soybeans and 88% of corn, much of which ends up unlabeled in processed foods. It's the products that came after Calgene's tomato that decided not to label and contributed to the public's wariness. So the industry, I feel, has let us down. I think the ham-handed refusal to label genetically engineered products was one of the reasons that Europe turned against the technology. In the European Union, GMO products must be labeled by law. And in the U.S., that movement has picked up steam in recent years, leading to contentious legislation and a battle for converts over the airwaves. The No campaign has raised more than $45 million, funded primarily by biotech, chemical, and food industry giants. Americans have the right to know what's in their food, and corporations don't have the right to hide that information to protect their profits. Unless you convince me that there's some sort of real difference to my health or something, I don't, I've never understood exactly why labeling, you know, mattered that much. If uh, you want to label genetic engineering, then you should also label breeding. Tomato breeders, they move thousands of genes whenever they cross tomatoes. You know, like the original tomato is inedible. It's toxic. And so through breeding over time, they've made it into something that consumers like. Breeders move many genes, we moved one. I said back in 1990, and I'll still say it today, I'm not aware of a single report documented of 30 years of transgenic plants where a single person has got sick or died from the use of transgenic plants. Many scientists say that genetically engineered foods are safe. And the FDA says they monitor safety through a consultation process with the companies that make them. But some still worry about potential risks and call for more independent testing. Our gene we took from a tomato, and then we reinserted it into a tomato. So it was relatively innocuous. There were, at the time, products in the pipeline where bacterial genes were going to be inserted into corn. And with the first genetically engineered animal, a fast-growing salmon awaiting approval for sale, the science continues to evolve. Today's biotech companies have learned from the flavor savers' mistakes. Calgene had pioneered a cutting edge technology, but applied it in the wrong market. This was a genetically engineered tomato that they were marketing as offering the consumer a better experience. That's different from what turned out to be commercially successful. 
the commercially successful genetically engineered crops were things that farmers might want to plant. More of the products now are a benefit to the farmer and not the consumer. The consumer doesn't really understand why am I getting this engineered food. Today, there are no genetically engineered tomatoes on store shelves. Instead, most supermarket tomatoes are still grown and harvested for yield more than taste, the way they were before the flavor saver was born. It was like a flame out early in the um, GMO story, and there's been nothing really like it ever since.